Today on Earth Focus, bees pollinate our crops, but they're disappearing. Jay Feldman of Beyond Pesticides on the reasons why, coming up on Earth Focus. Jay Feldman, why is beekeeping important to the environment and the economy? Pollination is a foundational issue uh, to humanity. I mean, we don't exist as a civilization unless we're able to pollinate our food crops and our flowers. 30% of our agricultural crops are uh, pollinated and require pollination. And we're talking about an industry that's about $15 billion. And we're talking about apples and we're talking about all kinds of fruit crops, obviously and almonds is a huge uh, uh, commodity that uh, requires pollination. So now there's a glitch, colony collapse disorder. When did it start and how bad is it? I think it really came on the scene in about 2004 where beekeepers noticed that they were losing their hives at extraordinary rates. We were looking at something like 30 percent losses whereas before that you would maybe see half of that kind of loss. So a doubling of the loss uh, of hives as a result of some new element that or something new that was going on that wasn't realized or seen before. We saw a tremendous decline in, in the ability of the hives to survive and then we also saw this new phenomenon that hadn't previously been identified and that is no bees the basic uh, foragers that go out and bring the pollen back to the hive and keep the, the sustainability of the hive going were not returning to the hive. So there, there is the queen uh, alone in the hive with that adequate uh, community to support the, the hive going forward. What do you think is causing it? We see pesticides as a, a major element uh, in, in this whole collapse colony collapse disorder. Penn State has done research over many years and they've found an average, an average of about seven different pesticides in virtually every sample of pollen that they evaluate. So we know there's a mixture of exposures going on and we know that these are nervous system toxicants. These adversely affect the nervous system so we know we're compromising the health of organisms that are trying to survive in the environment. But over time we have change pesticides. We keep changing these chemicals from the DDT organochlorine pesticides to the organophosphates to the synthetic pyrethrins and now and along comes a new family of chemicals, the neonicotinoids, which are different in many ways. But one of the principal ways uh, this family of chemicals is different is its mode of action. It's a, a chemical that's called a systemic pesticide, which means that it's taken up by the plant and translocated through the plant material and into the pollen. So we have an exposure scenario to a family of chemicals that are known to be highly toxic to bees on an acute basis in the short term causing immediate death but also in terms of chronic effects, long term impacts on the nervous system and so forth that are causing a, a problem or could be causing a problem coming on the scene. How widely used are neonicotinoids? Well, they're very widely used now and in increasing, increasingly so. I mean, we're talking, you know, b over a billion pounds and we're talking o over many crops. Of course, from the perspective of colony collapse disorder, we're looking at where are the bees exposed and what context are the bees exposed. This issue of exposure to bees in particular has not been adequately studied by the regulatory agency. When EPA originally registered uh, one of the most toxic neonicotinoids to bees, clothianidin, in 2003 and 4, it basically allowed this chemical on the market conditional to the receipt of a study on bees in particular. EPA registered the chemical without having full knowledge of what its impacts on bees would be and said we're going to design a study with the manufacturer Bayer and you're going to get us that study within a couple of years and then we'll make our recommendation as to whether we can continue its use. But in the meantime we're going to allow this pesticide on the market. So we saw 
uh, this pesticide on the market was finally approved. The study that, EP, that was submitted by Bayer was, was submitted to EPA was approved in 2006 and 7, and then you know the pesticide uh, continued to be used. But it was found out after it was approved back in 2010 that in fact the underlying study was inadequate. Who was in charge of the study? We have a uh, sort of an institutional problem with pesticides in that all the studies that are used by the regulatory agencies are generated by the manufacturer, by the registrar, the chemical company. So in effect, that, that is not unique to this particular chemical, um, but, it, but it is problematic because the company doing the testing has a vested interest in the, in the outcome of the study. And there's a lot of money involved? So we're talking about significant amounts of money here that are involved in, in things going the industry's ways. Now, having said that, of course, EPA as a regulator has a responsibility to ensure that the studies meet protocol and that they're independently evaluated and so forth and so on. However, in this case, the agency allowed a study that it later, four years, three, three or four years later, determined to be inadequate. And that's from a public health and environmental standpoint for the health of the bees, given that we are seeing this rising rate of ad you know, adverse impacts, to not scrutinize that study when it first came in, to ensure that it was compliant and adequate, is unconscionable for a regulator. What is EPA doing to follow up on colony collapse disorder? Are there any enforcement actions underway? We, with the beekeepers, the beekeeping community, wrote a letter to EPA at the end of uh, 2010 and said, you have a regulatory problem here. You've allowed the use of clothianidin, a neonicotinoid pesticide. Many researchers have identified this as a culprit, as a serious matter relative to declining bee health and colony collapse disorder. And you have inadequate data supporting the registration and the use of this chemical take this chemical off the market while the study is replaced um, and we get the data that is needed to make a determination, a safety determination. The agency said we're not going to do that. Pesticides already in use and we don't have enough clear data to say that it shouldn't be. So as you can see here, the burden is shifted to the public to show that there's a harm even though EPA didn't get all the information it should have had prior to registration. Did EPA ask Bayer to follow up on the study? EPA is now in the process of generating a new study with Bayer. I mean, EPA is now asking the study to be replicated, to be designed in a way that is adequate so it can be used for regulatory purposes. The problem, however, is that EPA has cited a provision in our federal pesticide law that allows it to conditionally register pesticides. And it's that discretionary authority to allow pesticides on the market prior to having a full battery of tests to make safety determinations that is problematic. We shouldn't be allowing our federal regulators to make judgments under severe pressure by chemical companies that have, are in a high stakes money game before the agency has all the information it needs to make that determination, that safety determination, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Have any other countries taken steps to limit the use of pesticides? Other countries acted quickly when they saw this escalating problem. France jumped in actually when beekeepers brought this to their attention and they, they took uh, the product off the market. Uh, Germany, Italy and other countries also acted. Uh, you know, we're, we're in a period of time now where we don't, still don't have complete science and countries are under amazing pressure from the companies that are selling these kinds of products and in this case Bayer. And so they're starting to back away from those suspensions in, in parts of Europe. France is holding very strong on the connection to corn, corn and colony collapse because what happens is, even though corn is not typically pollinated by bees, bees like the pollen of corn and overwinter uh, in cornfields. So when you're actually studying bee populations and impacts of 
pollen, and also a lot of a lot of neonicotinoids are used in corn production. You really have to study the the behavior of the organism and determine where they're getting their exposures, whether they're pollinating you know, the corn or not, the question is, is that a major exposure pattern? And this is something that has not been studied again. And in fact, the original study that EPA designed or, or accepted as a design from Bayer did not study exposure in cornfields. It studied exposure in canola. The reality is, if you want to look at high impact exposure and look at what could be causing this massive decline in, in colony health, and the mysterious disappearance of bees, you've got to look at contaminated corn or corn that's treated with neonicotinoid pesticides. And EPA, to this day, is, is not looking at that fully. What is American agriculture going to look like if this continues? There's a silver lining in all this. As the public wakes up and hears that we're killing bees, and we don't even know why, at the same time that we've introduced new chemicals that have mechanisms that are associated with bee kills, but our regulators can't define the problem, the public will stand up. The public will stand up and say, this is madness. And I know it's madness because I can go down to my grocery store today and buy organic food. And I don't want to support the madness because I want to see our society exist for my children and I want to leave a legacy as a concerned human being for the future of the earth and therefore I will use my power in the marketplace to support organic production. Biodiversity of species, biodiversity of genetics, biodiversity of ecologies are an essential strength to the agricultural environment and to our society and so we have to through that organic system, actually protect biodiversity because we view that as a tool to sustainability. It, we view that with the respect that it deserves to protect the legacy of our planet. Jay Feldman, thank you very much. Thank you. channel of uncompromising stories, world news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.